Nerd fam, and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be bringing you some exclusive coverage with my co-pilot, Rob Streche, this week. Covering the Consumer Electronics Show, lots of things happening. First up is a keynote by NVIDIA founder Jensen. We've also got a Cube Collective fan favorite, Zeus, here on the show. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me in Vegas to kick off a fabulous new year. Yeah, happy New Year indeed. Yes. Uh, just get back from vacation and got to go to Vegas. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we know the drill. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We, we know the drill. All right, real quick, first impressions. Jensen, one of the first people to speak this week. Obviously, lots of GPU and compute conversations happening here. Rob, what did you think? I think AI is at the heart of what we're going to hear this week. I think that connecting to the consumer may be a little lacking in this, but it was, I think, really strong in a lot of announcements that they had and where they were going with open uh, models and how they were really pushing for open, which we all love as well. We do. Yeah, Sias, what was your first impression? Yeah, you know, the, you're right. The connecting the dots to the consumer. Uh, you had to kind of do that yourself and understand that AI is going to be at the heart of everything we do, very much like the internet is today. We don't do anything without using some sort of internet service. Uh, in fact, Jensen actually mentioned that the interface to every application we use will be AI, will be uh, agentic. However, he just gave a bunch of examples of business applications, Palantir and CrowdSwing. Uh, but I do think that if you connect all those dots together, obviously the way you know, the old John Chambers said, the way we work with Lord and Play, yeah. most of that's consumer, right? We'll be, the internet will change, AI will change. So I, I don't, I, I think you had to connect all those dots yourself, but it was certainly there. Um, I was a little disappointed in the keynote, though, that out of the two hours that it took, it took like an, a, an hour and a half to get to most of the announcements. <laughs> yes. I thought it moved a little slow. Yeah. I would really agree with that. And if we if we look at hardware historically, consumer does lead the, the industry. I understand that enterprise is where we see a lot of things realized at scale. But I, I, I will say, I found today's keynote to be one of NVIDIA's most lackluster of recent memory. We've been I've been covering GTC last year. Lots of exciting announcements every time. There was a little lean on robots. There was a little lean on the partner ecosystem. There was a little lean on here's our newest, biggest 16 rack setup. But what was missing to me was the connection to impact. We watched a three minute video of a Waymo ride. I'm a San Franciscan. I can get in a Waymo any time. That's not. Well, it, that's unless not, the power goes out, then they all stop. Right? <laughs> well, that's any network infrastructure yeah. if we're really thinking about it when we're talking about connected but, and smart no, devices. But you see, there was things again you had to pull out. So the partnership. But is it up to the consumer to pull it out? Is my question to you, yeah. Zeus. The, if, but, if, but if he, I, he was aimed at not at the consumer. He was aimed. This at is the his consumer partner. electronics show. I, I understand, but he was. He was. This was more about how the people are going to, like the whole front end intro of doing all the gaming stuff, where, where they're coming from That's their NVIDIA's heritage. core, Correct. absolutely. Coming, coming from their heritage Historical. and showing yes. how core, their actually, new models yeah. are really going to go and improve that experience for people. And I, I think that's how they were trying to, and I think they were trying to, you know, to your point, weave into health medicine. Health medicine's been a, a big thing this week. In fact, Last night was first look with Samsung, yeah. and Samsung's leaning in heavily with AI and with that type of stuff as well. I think what they're trying to do is, you know, there's a lot of what's happening on device versus what's happening back in the cloud or happening in a secure data center. And we did lean into the corporate side, to your point, heavily, because he's like, you know, there's a lot of things that we have to keep sovereign. And it was a big sovereign message. Yeah. Which matters. Yes. Which, 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 which yeah. absolutely but matters. Even on the automotive side, again, you had to pull up. The, the, the partnership with the Mercedes. The, yeah, that was really actually learning, interesting in the fairness. The first full stack AV this year, right, in the U.S. And, then and the safest Europe. vehicle on the road yeah. per that keynote. And so I think from a consumer perspective, that is notable. Um, I think it, in, in some ways it got buried in all the technical jargon about the open models and things like that. Because what he did was he laid out the fact that NVIDIA has delivered more open models than anybody to date. They've had all these foundation models. They created the new one called Alpha Bio, and with that one, they're doing it with Mercedes instead of flipping it around and saying, here's our partnership with Mercedes. Here's another model we're adding to our stack, and oh, by the way, we've contributed more than anybody else. So he sort of flipped the lead, I thought. And let, and let me even push that farther, Zias, because I like what you're saying right now. What if they had just led with the solution? 
We worked with Mercedes to design the safest vehicle on the road. Then step back from that onto how we did it. Yes. But, the, but the problem is, and this is an issue I have with the tech industry as a whole right now, there is a discommunication between how the industry talks about AI and the potential impact and the way that the consumer world, which is what we're here talking about this week, all respect to NVIDIA and everybody else. This is not an enterprise show. This is a consumer show. We, there's, there's, a, there's a chasm right now between some of the biggest companies in this space and the consumer. And I just, I wanted more. And he came out 13 minutes late and talked about how he hadn't prepared for the speech. And I'm just gonna say that it showed. As fellow performers, we can see when someone hasn't really thought about that end consumer message. Now, what they're doing is impressive. I love that they're, I understand that when you're playing in robotics and automotive and healthcare and, and every space, and you're one of the most profitable tech companies on the planet, that there's a lot of pressure to showcase different things. We didn't see any other founders on the stage. We didn't see a single consumer founder come out and talk about how their partnership has done something. We were watching multiple videos that were illustrating a lot of CGI. And I. this is the one show a year we really get to sink our teeth in and get super hands on. And it just wasn't there for me today. Yeah, I, I think, again, NVIDIA has pulled back, except for the prosumer, aspect of where they sell oh, it's ai infinity. factory well look how much of the revenue is driven by gaming right. today versus before right absolutely right? Yeah, which is so. super fair yeah and i understand where they're coming from from a revenue perspective i was just secretly crave not secretly openly craving as a consumer i wanted to hear about some of the solutions they are helping empower that are driving consumer impact yeah. versus this continued focus on the hypothetical value add yeah. that we're going to get that we've been hearing but, for three but years. But they kind of all do. So if you look at like the Vera Rubin announcement, which I thought they yeah. crammed way too quickly at the end, yeah. is, Agreed. is that a consumer play or not, right? Obviously, it's a hyperscaler play, it's a large enterprise play, but it enables a lot of consumer things post-deployment, right? So again, you're connecting not yourself to your point, Savvy, but, but I, I do think the the consumer connection is inferred, or at least should be inferred. But uh, I, I do think that when you look at what this company has become, it is a large enterprise hyperscaler company that delivers Hondo an pay. awful lot of infrastructure, AI infrastructure, oh, doing a lot. the biggest companies but in the I, world. Here, here's, I think, the connection to that. And when I've been pushing in this, this week, one of my, my the things I'm going and trying to understand better is how many of the companies here, the consumer companies, are actually doing their own AI, or are they using an API from a Gemini, uh, a Azure AI, or from a Bedrock, where they're using some model there, or you know, Open AI for that yeah. matter? And how many are actually rolling their own? And in fact, when I pushed on Samsung, for instance, because that's the discussion I've had already, they have half and half. They have Bixby, which is their own, and then they're also using Gemini from Google. And Over time, start, I think these companies gravitate, gravitate to publicly available large language models and augmented with small language well, models. Yes, and they're doing, own, I right? think even yeah. Jensen did hit on that. I think he buried that. And I think this is where it comes back to, okay, this is, I mean, again, what is it? It's not going to be in in the, the you know, mechanical dog that's out there on the floor. I already saw it last, you know, last night that is going to be your, you know, a pet for you. They had showcased it last year and this year it's more AI driven. It's it's not gonna be GPU driven. And I and think this is where, to your point, they, they didn't have that direct connection like they used to with the consumer because the GPU is not in the device. But what is happening is that you know their models are being updated and inference is being driven into there. Maybe they end up on some of these CPUs that they talked about. Well, you, ju you just mentioned inference, and I, I don't know if they're in a quiet period about this or not, but it's impossible for me to start 2026 without talking about the $20 billion licensing deal that NVIDIA just did with Grok, the LPU being one of the greatest innovations in inference and, and pieces of architecture making AI real. But congratulations, frankly, to Jonathan Ross and the team at Grok. We've been following them since inception, and it's, and it's extremely impressive. But that was one of those tools. Like, I know, and, and I know you both know, and this is why... I, you know, we're all here because we support tech and we support NVIDIA. I'm, I'm not here to be a hater, 
But when it comes to these moments of communication, especially when we're kicking off a year, you have the opportunity to emotionally connect with an audience. We did not get emotionally connected to at all today by NVIDIA. And the reality is when we think about inference, just as an example, since you brought it up, that's what makes AI real. I've, I've, I've covered the personalized learning robots that Grok and NVIDIA empower that in itself, everyone here has learned something. A lot of people here are a parent. A lot of people here have tried to continue their own learning. And there was no mention of what this does in the world. We saw robots moving, we saw cars driving, but there wasn't the, hey, this is how it's gonna actually impact. And my hope for this show, and I know you wanna say something serious, but my hope for this show is, I, I'm actually not interested in AI at the show. I'm interested in the impact of new technology at the show, whether that's AI or ML powered, whether that's sensor powered, whether that's just the iteration and evolution of various products. I'm sick of us talking about what this can do. It's been, it's been three years of that in the mainstream and it's been 25 years in the making. Rubber's gotta hit the road at some point. And just because you made a bigger server stack doesn't mean that does anything for humanity. Yeah, well, here's the, I know there's been a lot of parallels drawn to the early days of the internet. And, oh, I, totally. and I think this is the difference between, say, a Jensen keynote now and a John Chambers keynote back in the early days, where John would actually come out and talk about how the internet is going to change the way we live. It's going to allow women in Middle Eastern countries that can't work to work for U.S. companies. It's going to democratize. Which it has. Right. It's going to democratize education, right? Things like that. And they would talk a lot about the societal impact. I think where, and this has sort of been NVIDIA style. They talk a little bit about it at a high level and then boom, they get down on the straight fees and fees. Right. Yes. Right. And, but Which is fine. I'm yeah. not, you know, and I'm not criticizing that. I just, but, when you have the opportunity to inspire a yeah. year of innovation. But I, I think it. where we are now too is we've had a lot of vision over the last few years. 2026 has got to be a year that this stuff comes to life. Yeah. yeah. Right? And That's that, what I'm saying. Yeah. But I think that was the, the point that he, he was trying to say, hey, we've already, it's already real. And I, I think... I, my, you know, with Umbrins to Jensen, I mean, he's a really smart guy, very big company. I think one of the things is why it hasn't really latched on yet is ROI. ROI to the company selling the, the devices, the companies building out the services. I think this is the year that ROI has to hit for Agreed. a lot of these different things. And I think people are taking smaller pieces of it in the enterprise. And I think the consumers will do that as well. I think one of the things he did hit on in the Vera Rubin announcements, and I, I think the cash and the storage stuff, which we'll go into more in depth in a minute with one of the partners. But I, I think when you start to look at how they're going and actually you know, announcing a completely new system, it wasn't just a chip. Yeah. It was a set of Correct. chips. Correct. No, it, it was chips. robust. Well, well and, they've reinvented the system several times. Right? Correct. And, and I, I at think, this point, they've had to. But they have to get, disrupt yeah. themselves. And yeah. I think that's the great thing yeah. about them. And I think Jensen even says that, even though he talked about not doing more than two at a time, which was pretty amusing. And then there were six different yeah, yeah. chips or something like that. When I look at this, I think one of the things that I pull away from this is, to your point, I mean, he's about the plumbing, the infrastructure, and the tech and all of these different pieces coming together, I think they also looked at, and I, you know, they had all of the partners at the bottom of the slides there that are gonna go and make this real out there. But I think that for them, it's also, they want to be seen also as a software company as part of it as well, not just a hardware company. And I think that was a big Well, piece. the software is what keeps them ahead. Correct. And right. Absolutely. Stack, well, and, and so, and but the, the thing that I found to be a stark contrast to, I mean, you know, we, we've all been at GTC keynotes at the at the conversation they had. I believe it was at CES last year. Bill McDermott was on stage with Jensen. They had multiple different partners come out on stage with Jensen. And I think, you know, as we know, no one gives more social proof to the community than having a customer or a solution come out and tell why you're beneficial for you. Yeah, no, you're right. They talked about that Siemens partnership. They could have brought Siemens up. Exactly. They, the and they, they talked they, about yeah. Serve Robotics yeah. we're going to have on the show this week as well. Be sure and check that out. We've got their CEO coming on with us tomorrow. They, they talked about all these partnerships, but we didn't get to see that. We didn't get to hear what that's actualizing. And, and I, when Jensen said there were 15 keynotes wrapped into one, I felt like it was like one kind of bundling in a If you pile. had been there for two hours beforehand to get your seat, like we were, yeah. they yeah. actually had uh, Mercedes-Benz out on stage earlier on. And some of the startups there. They should have wrapped that they in. They should have wrapped that. Should've, yeah. I think that was a miss. Yeah. I think that was a miss. They could have. 
It's not that they're not Shut doing cool no. things. Yeah. It just wasn't demonstrated publicly with this keynote in yeah. a way that I felt did NVIDIA justice, is yeah. what I'm trying to say. I, I agree. But I, I think, again, Vera Rubin, really cool stuff. We'll Absolutely. be dissecting That's a new that high water mark. Yeah. Physical AI, very yeah. much a big part of the conversation. And Jensen kept talking about uh, AI physics. There's, there, we're clearly moving into a tangible space, which makes this hardware nerd very happy. Right. But I think it's going to be interesting you know it's possible they're saving their biggest and best secrets for gtc in march i mean that's in two months so i know exactly months. i was thinking about that the whole yeah, time it's yeah. 60 days away i'm yeah. not surprised well that the fact that they're in production of vera rubin is pretty impressive at this yeah. point i mean again i will say their rate of hardware innovation is absolutely yeah i mean bluefield 4 is out now new spectrum right they yep. got they've got a faster network than anybody else on the planet today uh granted it is infiniband based but right it, but it's the only way you can get these gpus to talk to each other at line rates right no, they're doing a lot of the right yeah, things. Yeah. I just want them to illustrate their value best in a slightly more Fair digestible point. manner. Yeah. That's my advice to you, NVIDIA, if you <laughs> happen to watch this wonderful keynote analysis. Robin, this was fantastic. Thank you both Thank you. for your fantastic insights always over the years on the Cube. And I'm excited to continue to cover the rest of the show with both of you. Absolutely. All right. We're going to have a lot of fun. And thank all of you for tuning in to our exclusive coverage here at CES in Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news.